Class morality. The communists believe that society is divided into two classes. Uh, these two classes are the business class, called the bourgeoisie, and the working class, called the proletariat. Between these two classes, there is a state of permanent, truceless war. Uh, the proletariat is ordained, according to their belief, to rise in power, to overthrow, by revolutionary acts, the bourgeois class, and to establish proletarian dictatorship. And from this class war or class struggle, all moral and ethical values are determined. Lenin said, communist morality is determined by the needs of the class struggle. And any action which will advance uh, the overthrow of the bourgeoisie by the proletariat is, according to communist doctrines, a good act. On the other hand, every, any act that would sustain the status quo with the business class uh, in a position of respectability and some power is an evil act. Uh, the communists change their tactics from time to time. They may even change their strategy. But their basic Marxist-Leninist doctrines remain the same. Uh, this communist concept of class and the class origin of character and emotions is very firmly rooted. Uh, the concept of class guilt is basic uh, to the entire structure of communism. In the final analysis, an individual is guilty not because of what he does, but because of the class or the class to which he belongs. Uh, if he was so unfortunate as to be born into a bourgeois environment, and this bourgeois environment gave him the experiences that generated the bourgeois nature, uh, he is historically reject and marked for liquidation. Uh, this is well illustrated by uh, one particular part of the speech in which Nikita Khrushchev outlined the crimes of Joseph Stalin. Uh, Nikita Khrushchev has been regarded by many as symbolizing the changes taking place within communism and the transformation of communism from a system of murderous tyranny to a more civilized system of comparative liberty. Uh, one of the acts of Khrushchev that uh, helped create uh, this image of him was his speech in 1956 uh, at the 20th Congress of the Russian Communist Party where he exposed the crimes of the late communist idol Joseph Stalin. Uh, this was certainly a remarkable speech. Uh, one of the most remarkable, if not the most remarkable speech in human history. Uh, it was a long speech and it was filled with specific details of the incredible cruelty, brutality and murderous barbarism of Joseph Stalin, the communist who had been adored and eulogized and praised for so many years throughout the world. Khrushchev tells, for example, that Stalin caused the arrest of 98 out of 139 members of the Central Committee that elected him to power in 1934 and had them shot for treason. Uh, this was a remarkable act. Uh, this Central Committee of the Russian Communist Party was the supreme governing body of world communism. Communism within Russia and ultimately communism within the world it was made up of the very elite of communism, men who had dedicated their lives uh, to communist triumph. Stalin didn't merely say that 70% of them were traitors. He had 70% of them arrested and shot for treason. Uh, that's as though the Pope was suddenly to declare 
that 70% of the cardinals had been disguised Presbyterians all their lives and would need to be excommunicated. It's as fantastic as that. But Stalin didn't simply talk about it, he did it. Uh, now the fact that he did it may be a revelation of the nature of Stalin. The fact that he was able to do it is a revelation of the nature of communism because it was the very structure of communist authority in the communist party that gave Stalin the power to do these things. And the interpretation of whether Stalin should have done it, of whether these people were innocent or guilty, is a revelation of the nature of communism, the nature of Khrushchev, the nature and ideas of the members of the Central Committee of the Communist Party. Khrushchev was speaking to the Central Committee of the Communist Party, the elite of communists, communism, the believers in communist doctrine. He discussed with them not merely what Stalin did, but whether he should have done it, whether these people were or were not traitors. The arguments that he used uh, to discuss their guilt or innocence are most revealing. Uh, how did he proceed? He didn't mention one of them by name. He did not mention a single act that any individual had committed. He didn't discuss a conversation, an association. There was no record of deeds or characters or personalities involved whatsoever. As a communist, speaking to communists, he had a far more basic criterion with which to judge innocence or guilt. He stated, I investigated their class of social origin and 60% were working class in origin, were proletarian in origin, therefore, quote, it is inconceivable that they could have been 70% treasonable. Treason and guilt is not a question of what you do or what you say within communist doctrine. It is a question of your class of social origin because it is the economic environment of your early years which forms your basic character and ideas. Uh, the economic environment of the working class is good, therefore it forms good characters and creates good ideas. Therefore people who emerge from this economic environment are good and faithful and loyal and true to the revolution and to communism. On the other hand, those who are born into the bourgeois environment uh, have experiences which create evil attitudes and evil ideas, therefore they're basically evil, historically diseased, historically reject. So the bourgeoisie as a class is disloyal, it's unfaithful. The proletariat as a class is loyal and faithful. Uh, Khrushchev examined the class constituency of these people arrested by Stalin. He finds that 60% of them were proletarian. Uh, therefore, only 40% could have been treasonable. The class mathematics did not add up. According to this argument, if Stalin had merely arrested and executed 40% of the Central Committee, Khrushchev would not have had a word against it. The shocking thing is that this argument made sense to Khrushchev. The shocking thing is that it made sense to the members of the Central Committee because this is the very structure, the very being of communism, this doctrine of class and class guilt and class warfare and class dictatorship. And if they cease to believe this, they would cease to be communists. The entire world structure to the communist is this basic division into classes. The communists believe that it transcends all national boundaries, that in every country there is the proletariat. Uh, the interests of the proletariat in every country are the same. 
Therefore, the unity of the proletarian forces throughout the world must be encouraged at all cost. The name that they give to this unity of uh, international uh, proletarian classes is proletarian internationalism. Communism teaches that true patriotism is basically your loyalty to the class, the proletariat. And uh, since the interests of the international proletariat uh, can be identified with the triumph of the Communist Party in Russia or in China, uh, dedication to the triumph of Russian or Chinese communism over the bourgeoisie of your own country to the communists is not treason, it is patriotism. It is a higher form of patriotism because all morality, all guilt is derived from this question of class. Uh, the communists believe that the communist party is the brain of the proletariat, is identified with the proletariat. Therefore there is an international communist party solidarity and basic patriotism demands that loyalty must be given to the International Communist Party above and beyond the demands of patriotism to the established government which they regard as the government of the enemy, the bourgeoisie, in many circumstances and conditions. Uh, the final stage of this class division of the world, as the communists see it, has led to the emergence of the government of the United States and its associates in a strong position throughout the world and they identify this as imperialism and they believe that the United States by its class nature is a great imperialist force which is threatening uh, the historic freedom of the people of the world and therefore the United States must be fought and opposed at all costs. The tragic thing is this, when a communist believer, a true communist, serves the cause of a foreign communist enemy, he believes himself to be a true patriot.